In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, two weeks ago, the church taught us the difference between the public and the Pharisees and why we should imitate the first and to never judge others like the second, identifying our own sins to repent from them, turning back to Jesus Christ. Last Sunday, we learned how we can turn our life away from Jesus Christ, like the prodigal son, but repent by refocusing on God and come back to him before it is too late, asking to become one of his disciples, one of his servants. And when we do, he will welcome us to his kingdom as sons and as daughters. How can we live? 100 years? More less? What a blessing it is for us to be given such a life, a gift from God, not working in the field of our dream, raising wonderful kids, and being a part of a great family. A journey that allows us to enjoy each other, family, friends, nature, everything else around us. Life is full of opportunities, but none of them matter if they do not sanctify us by bring us closer to God, allowing us to unite with him. As, as, as I was writing this sermon, I remembered the parable of the sewer that happened to be found in three gospels, Matthew, Luke, and Mark, indicating the highly importance of such parable for our spiritual growth. From this parable, we learned how some seed died since they had no root in them, while others grew and multiplied as expected from us by bringing fruits that benefits all. By focusing on life only as a main goal and lacking the ability to see what's beyond it, seeing life as the only thing for us to enjoy will result in us losing our focus on God becoming materialistic to a point that we live to only to enjoy life away from God and hence our roots die in us. This is why today's gospel is unique since it is assigned to be read once a year on this day, Judgment Day. It is today that the church reminding us of who we are and of our purpose in this life allowing us to be prepared for the great land to come next Monday. The path that will lead us to the day where we can participate in the light of the resurrection of Christ and witness to his kingdom in our life. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we receive a free invitation, a free reminder to become aware of reality. We are not created to only focus on life and to only enjoy it, but to take advantage of it so we can be prepared for the life to come. A wise person will be the one who will keep the light in his heart and in his soul lit. This period of Lent gives us the chance to regain our energy and charge and change our life around so we can focus on the only source of life that is Christ, his crucifixion, and soon to be his resurrection. Rising above and beyond earthly world was exactly why we were called Christians in Antioch first. They called us that because they noticed that our life was nothing but Christ's. We were utilizing our earthly means as tools used to unite us with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how do we refocus on Jesus Christ? Is it only by doing good deeds? In today's gospel, the church boldly told us that each of our faiths can be different. Yes, we are created equal. And in this life, we got the time and the chance to create our own legacy. But at the end, 
our fates may not be the same. Some of us will end up with the Christ in his kingdom, while others will be sent away. And that is our choice. But how can we be on Jesus' right like the sheep? Christ himself answered this question by saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, as you did it to the one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. It is clear to see Christ in everybody, even those that are considered not to be important, weak, and ignorant. It's the litmus paper that tells us that we are on the right path. Christ's brothers are those that cannot repay us back, expect, except by praying, by raising their hearts to heaven and bestowing on us from high God's blessing. Why? For the love that we showed them by sharing ourselves and everything we have, the money, the position, everything else that we may enjoy is nothing but for that purpose. That is to share with them what has come from him, the source of everything, fulfilling what the divine liturgy proclaim, which we're gonna hear it in a few minutes, thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee on behalf of all and for all. Today's epistle, on the other hand, make us face another harsh reality that we try to run away from. We are not only saved by what good deed we do, but how can we influence the spiritual and the physical growth of others? We heard St. Paul saying, only take care lest this liberty of yours somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. We have the right to do whatever we want since we are created in his image and his likeness, completely free to a point that we can take advantage of such freedom and deny him. But are we ever really truly free in life? We are either materialistic spiritual, or to a degree, some of both. Our life is nothing but trying to balance between the two. The desire of the flesh are against the spirit, St. Paul says, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the thing you want to do. In the process of such balancing, the church is asking us not to forget the least among his brethren. Why? Because of love. God is love. And if God lives in our hearts, then we will love everybody and everything around us as we love ourselves. But if we do not love, then God does not reside in us. Being loving creature are what allows us to inherit the kingdom of God, the kingdom of love. Love demands from us that whatever we do is for the sake of helping others and improving their lives to never act as a stumbling block to affect others' physical and spiritual growth. By giving examples of one faithful member of church, St. Paul called him man of a spiritual knowledge that used to sit on a table with idol worshipers participating in their meals. He became a stumbling block to the rest of the church, as today's epistle stated. For if anyone sees you, the man of knowledge, at the table of the idol worshipers, might he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so, by your knowledge, this weak man is destroyed, the brother for whom Christ died. Harming fellow human in any way is nothing but breaking the most important commandment and separate us from God. Commandment is love. Singing against your brother and wandering their conscience when it's weak, you sin against God, St. Paul continue. As a Christians, we need to be constantly examining our world, our word, thought, and action while studying 
while at work, even when we are dining out or even when we're partying. So we can truly deserve the title given to us once and for all, Christians. So do not hear Christ condemning us if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large milestone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. Our actions, our words, should allow others to see Christ acting through us. His light then will be radiating, making us like lighthouse, reflecting his glorious kingdom. This is possible only when we live according to Jesus' most important commandment, love your neighbor like yourself. Loving others in word, in thought, in action, in everything you do is the compass that tells us that we are going in the right direction. That will lead us to be filled with God that is love to all, to help them physically and spiritually with all our might and to never harm them instantly or not at all. Being full of love, dear brothers and sisters, is when we can see and live the kingdom of God here on earth. We can taste it while we're living, while anticipating the second coming of Jesus, so we can be counted worthy with these that are on high, on his right hand, hearing him saying to all of us, come, O blessed of my fathers, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen.